Just think about it. At this very moment, there are around 500 types of bacteria in your body, which are reproducing non-stop. It's due to this that, on average, there are approximately 100 trillion microorganisms in every adult. At least, that's what Dr. Roy D. Slitter from the Irish Institute of Cork claims. We're only 10% people. The rest is microbes, says the doctor. In just the intestines, we hold up to 2 kilograms of various microbes. But have you ever thought of what happens with these creatures after we die? As soon as biological death of a person occurs, the first to find out are the bacteria living inside of them. The thing is, certain internal organs continue working after irreversible death. This means that the bacteria will have something to eat. In essence, we can imagine our body as a gigantic country, in which there are densely populated cities of bacteria. The intestines are a real megapolis, where every microscopic resident carries out some kind of function. While we are alive, our body, with help from the immune system, is capable of holding back these thousands of bacteria in position. After death, they become unemployed and start a great migration. During the first 24 hours, microbes from the intestines enter blood vessels and the internal organs, where they start actively reproducing and eating everything in their path. During life, such rampant amusement is limited by the immune system, but now the microbes are simply unstoppable. As a result, the microbes release gases which make the body look like the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. This is only the start. It's about to get worse. After yet more time, while E. coli and the intestines eat plenty, the cells of the internal organs start going through oxygen hunger. Because of the accumulation of toxic substances, they break down, releasing compounds. It's at this moment that the internal organs are filled with anaerobic bacteria, microbes which feel comfortable in the absence of oxygen. Eating the body's tissue and splitting accumulated compounds, they create various substances – methane, hydrogen, ammonia, sulfide, as well as a multitude of others because of which the swollen body may pop. However, even without this happening, the rotten smell is spread many meters around. The odor, where each molecule is rich in thousands of tones, does not fail to attract attention. It's so strong that even many Febreze air freshener packs placed on the body will not alter the situation. If, then, the body isn't found by people, hordes of insects will do the job. Roughly four days after your death, hundreds of flies will fly to the sweet, rotten smell of decomposing flesh, their favorite delicacy. The least patient will fly to the body just an hour after death, but will have to wait until the dish matures. Insects feed not only off the flesh and skin, but are also capable of eating anything that comes out of your body while the internal organs are occupied by bacteria. Flies are household-orientated creatures. As soon as they finish their meal, they start laying down eggs, so the next generation of flies can also enjoy some human flesh. In every laying process, there are up to 120 eggs, out of which an unreal number of hungry maggots will come about in just one day. Hundreds and thousands of small, white worms colonize the lying body, eating its dead cells. In the process of eating, the maggots release a lot of heat, so they need to continuously travel around in order not to overheat. Seeing this constant movement, one can compare them with penguins, except the arctic birds move in order to warm up, the maggots to cool off. From the outside, it looks as though life has somehow returned to the dead body. 
Over time, the number of maggots will increase as they become flies and lay down eggs of their own. This means one thing. The feast is coming to an end. By the way, such an interesting peculiarity was used by doctors for cleaning wounds of dead cells after severe burns. I can only imagine the difficulty in convincing patients to undergo such a radical method. Besides flies, beetles and mites fly over for the celebration. These hungry creatures have strong jaws, so they love tough food. They swarm over the skin, tendons, and if food is lacking, other creatures busy eating you. They also, like flies, lay down eggs and raise new specimens. Moths come to the feast last, as they only eat hair, which is not of interest to the rest of the bunch. At this stage, only scattered bones are left from the body. The feast does not end here. In the decaying process, chemical elements are continuously leaking out into the soil, making it a real Klondike for nematode worms. Aside from the ground inhabitants, spores of mushrooms will spread over the scraps. They can feed off the decomposing material for months, even when seemingly nothing is left of the corpse. So if you ever see a bunch of mushrooms creating a contour of a human body, know that a death took place in that spot. Although our body is primarily interesting for microbes, large creatures can also not miss the opportunity to have a snack. Vultures and other animals, pigs, raccoons, and wild dogs will also take great pleasure in eating our flesh. Their simplicity simply amazes. They absolutely do not care where this meat comes from or if its owner is dead. However, individual predators, like a wolf, will only eat human remains in the case of an emergency. It's much more likely that they'll attack a live victim and then eat its remains. Yes, this is definitely not a pleasant picture. I hope you understand that this is a natural process and that many wild animals see nothing shameful in it. But with this next fact, your hair will surely stand on end. During the last few years, strange cases have become more frequent. Elderly people have been found partially eaten. Moreover, not by bacteria or by flies. The thing is, their pets could not independently open the fridge and the packaged foods in them. If their deceased owners had already been lying motionless for a few days, their hunger outweighed their love. Most often, this kind of scavenger has been awakened in cats. They are more independent and prone to hurting their owner. Just think of how your pet bites you or hits you with its paw in order to wake you up. At the same time, try imagining a dog biting its owner, at least while he or she is still showing signs of life. If a dead person is the only source of food, even a good boy can, at some point, become a bad one. On the other hand, our pets cannot deny themselves the tastier bits, so in all situations, they would eat the most appetizing parts soft cheeks and loins. What they do not bite is the hand that fed them. So if you're worried that you will suddenly leave this world and there will be no one to feed your pets, worry no more. Up to the moment when your body is found, your dogs and cats will be provided with plenty of protein. All in all, under any scenario of events, our body after death will become a dinner table for a variety of creatures who will nibble on our bodies up to the very bones. Ultimately, even the bones decompose into separate chemical compounds and fertilize the soil, maintaining an eco-balance. In science, this process is called mineralization and will, for sure, please people who think of the environment's preservation. If you don't decide to help preserve it during life, you're guaranteed to help after death. If you like this video, 
please put a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell and find out about new videos first. Stay tuned as the most interesting is yet to come.